Hello, welcome back to the Code Circus. Today we are actually going to start a three-part series on proximity sensors. So a proximity sensor, it, imagine a box, a big box, that is around a avatar that can detect whether or not you are near that avatar. So basically, if you get into the space of that proximity box, then some kind of signal is going to be sent and that will lead to an event. Now we've actually seen something like this in our collision mesh and our collision box, it, but those are very, very close to the character. And if you, you have to get right up on top of that character, which is kind of weird in a game that you have to get right on top. And you saw that in our um, version where we had the two avatars interacting with each other, you basically had a hit that other avatar in order to get them to react. And then we had to write some code to get the other avatar to move backwards from them. So that's kind of awkward. So they made this proximity sensor so we don't need to do that. It also gives us the ability to set up proximities to regions within the space. It doesn't have to be near any character. So the proximity object can just sit all on its own. It doesn't have to be actually around anything. Uh, it could just be an empty space. And we'll see that um, in our series as well. But first we're gonna start with adding a whole bunch of characters and things to our world. And we're gonna learn a couple new things along the way as we do this. So let's dive right into some code. The first thing we're going to do is pull in our imports. And most of these are the same we've seen before, but there's a new one here, import viz proximity. So that's the class that's gonna take care of our proximity um, detection and allow us to make a proximity object. Um, we're gonna put in our configuration for viz connect and our world. So we'll, let's add that in. And next what we're going to do is we're going to add in a starting location for our camera. So when we think about our view of our avatar, sometimes we like to position that in a way that's a little bit different than um, the, the default view. So what, what happens here, and it, and it happens in order. So first you can imagine there's a camera, right? like in a movie, and we're going to move that camera to this location, 10.5, 0, 20.5. Then we're going to turn the camera to negative 90, 0, 0. That sets up our camera the way we want it to be so we can have our scene set up. Important to note about this, if I turn the camera first and then move it, it will move based upon the... Um, angle at which the camera is at. So for example, if I took the camera and bent it down and then moved it in um, the, I think it's the Y direction, right? It would actually follow the Y path of the camera, not of the world. So that would make the camera kind of move up at an angle because we've tilted the camera down. So you have to be careful in the order in which these do get done, that the moves do affect the angles and the angles do affect the moves. Okay, so now let's add in a male and female character. We've done this before, but we're gonna make sure we add them as avatars. And we're gonna use state 14, so it looks like they're just in conversation. So we got their position set having them facing each other. And now we're going to add a pigeon, but this pigeon is going to be a special pigeon. We're not actually going to see this pigeon. So I add it as an avatar, and then I'm going to make it invisible. Now, why might I make it invisible? Well, what I'm going to do is actually clone the pigeon so there are multiple copies of the same pigeon. And the reason why that's important to clone it is because now the pigeon can have all the same actions. And we're going to put some randomness in this so the pigeons kind of randomly move around the screen into the scene. 
that allows us to have our pigeons um, kind of behave in, in like a flock kind of thing without having to do it independently for each pigeon. So every pigeon we set up will get the same default code and walk around in those positions. So let's do that. First, I'm going to set up a list of lists, basically a two-dimensional list. And in here, I'm going to record all of the p pigeon positions. So where I'm going to put them on the screen. They're going to be all over the place. You can see there's a bunch of them. And then I'm going to use a for loop for each pigeon position. So for each position in pigeon positions, I'm going to create a copy of the pigeon where its location is the next position in the list. So I'm just copying the current position. Now that means all of these pigeons will have you know, similar types of um, things. So we don't have to necessarily go ahead and create each of these pigeons independently. Then I'm going to put in a bunch of actions for my pigeon. And this will apply to each position as it gets created. Let's take a look at these. So I'm going to give it a random speed by using um, the set animation speed. And I'm going to pick a random number from 0.7 to 1.5. So this is going to set their animation speed to some random number. So some will move faster, some will move slower. And then I'm going to set a random walk to position, which is using a random float method that's part of VizAC, which I don't think we've seen before. So vizact.randfloat allows us to pick a random decimal. Up to now we've been picking random integers, and we saw at one point that caused a problem because we wanted decimals, so we divided. This is a better method, um, vizact.randfloat. So we're picking some random positions, and it's going to be based upon um, positions that are in the array. So it's position 0 minus 0.3, to position 0 plus 0 0.3. So it's from that first position. Then we're going to um, change the state. And we're going to make it a random state between 1 and 3. So that pigeon has three different states. Then we're going to put in a random wait time. And then we're going to have the pigeon perform an idle sequence, which does random speed, random walk, random animation, random wait, and then we're going to do that forever. So it's going to basically loop through these th things forever. And then we just run the action for pigeon idle. And our pigeon is now set. And then we go up and create the next pigeon. And all of our pigeons are now happily uh, wandering around our screen. So then we're going to put some other things into our world. Let's add a planter for our plant, like that. Now, one thing I wanted to point out here, and I probably should have pointed it out earlier. Let me go back. Notice the file location for VCC male, VCC female, uh, pigeon, and plant. I'm not putting in the folders of where they are, and that's because Vizard knows where those files are. They're in the default Vizard folder. We normally can't do this unless these files are directly in our folder. So even though you may not have a copy of, you know, you think you don't have a copy of the plant somewhere stored, it, Vizard actually knows where it is. So you don't have to worry about telling Vizard exactly where it is. It knows how to find it. So it, it's okay. It's going to find it. So we're putting in a plant. It has a position and a scale. Then we're going to put in some crates, a stack of crates. Basically, we're adding a whole bunch of objects to our world for our participant to wander around to. But now I'm going to use another <clears throat> kind of thing here. I'm going to clone the crate. 
So this will take create one, and not only will it make a copy of it, but it will actually make a direct clone of it, which means that because I, I set the, um, the file name here in create one, I don't need to set it again it knows where it is because I'm just doing a clone. So it's similar to the copy, but it's actually just creating a duplicate of it. And since these are static objects, they can just sit there and we're just gonna position them and scale them. Let's see. Okay, now we're gonna add in some more avatars. And I'm going to position, these avatars are going to be positioned around the screen in different locations. And these are the ones that are kind of going to really react to the participant in our world. The other stuff will just have um, proximity, creates symbols around them so we'll know when we get there. But we're not going to have anything happen when they get there. We could, but we're just going to focus on the three avatars. Again, I'm going to create my avatar. I'm using avatar copy because it doesn't actually have a clone. That's only for the add child. The add avatar is gonna have an avatar copy. I'm not quite sure why it's not consistent, but that's what it is. Uh, we're gonna have our name of our file, which is the mail2. Again, visitor knows where that file is. Set up its position, its angle, its scale. And then all we have to do when we make a copy of it is set up a new position and a new angle. So it changes the direction our avatar is facing. Uh, remember, if we affect the last two numbers, it's going to position our avatar like on the ground, and we don't necessarily want that. So it's really this first um, number is dealing with the, the spinning of our avatar, so it's facing the right direction. And then I created an avatar that is sitting on a crate, because we're going to change the state of that avatar. So I position it um, near a crate. So I'm going to have to give it a crate to actually sit on. And that's why I created this create one clone that's going to be underneath avatar one. And when avatar one is in that sitting state, it's going to look like our avatar is sitting on the crate. Okay, so now I just need to set the states of my three avatars, avatar one, Avatar 2 and Avatar 3. Avatar 1, we're going to do a state 6, which is, um, I believe, dancing. Avatar 2, state 1, which is just going to be idle. And then Avatar 3 uh, is going to be, um, I may have that backwards, but state 5. I think state 6 is sitting, state 5 is dancing. Got it. State 1 is just idle. So that seems to be everything. Let's give this a try and see the world that is now built. Oh, what am I missing? <coughs> I think I, oh, my tabs are in indentation because I was cutting and pasting here. I think I messed up my tabs. Um, so that's as simple as just backspacing and hitting, and oh, I think I got an extra space in here somewhere. There we go. That's it. That's it. So once you mess up one, you kind of have to go down and fix the whole block. So if that happens to you, this is the kind of solution. It's just a backspace, a backspace and a tab. We'll fix that problem. Hopefully I don't have it anywhere else. There we go, all fixed. Okay, so now I have my world. There's my dancing guy. He's hanging around dancing. And then you can see my pigeons. I have a bunch of pigeons there, like there's three of them, but I think there's more floating around somewhere. And then I have my guy sitting on his crate. And then there's my plant randomly sitting off over there. Oh, there's another pigeon. There's my guy just standing idle. There's my stack of crates. See if we can find more pigeons. Room around a little bit. Uh, I think I'm missing at least one. I think I only found four. I think there was more than that. Okay. So there's my entire world, and there's my people having a conversation. So I've now built this kind of space that we can go and add in proximity to. So that's what we're going to do next time. We're going to pick up from this file and add in proximity to our program.
I hope you enjoyed this and feel free to change the world. You don't have to use the world that I have and feel free to move your things around. Maybe if you want to use a, a different avatar, maybe you want to bring in an avatar from um, uh, Mixamo. That would be awesome to add in your own avatar versus using the ones I did. Just remember if you use an avatar that is not kind of the built-in wizard avatars, uh, you're going to have to add in your own states and uh, you're going to have to give the correct file path to that avatar otherwise it won't load it will have to be in the same folder um, or at least have the same starting folder with a file path uh, as the wizard file that you're saving so that's all for today i will see you next time mm -hmm.